One of my favorite minigames in Minecraft has always been TNT Run. It is such a fun and simple minigame that you can just mindlessly play, which is what I like. It is for sure the minigame I put the most time on in Hypixel, and it's actually the one and only minigame I've ever installed on my own Minecraft server. So today I'm going to show you how to set up TNT Run on your own Minecraft server using a plugin called TNT Reloaded. Make sure to subscribe. You would help me out a crazy lot. So first of all, make sure to download TNT Run Reloaded. The plugin is 100% free. There will be a link to it down below. Simply click on download now and drag the jar file into your plugins folder. Then reboot your server and you should be good to go. You also want to install world edit, which we will be using for the initial setup. Same thing, link down below. And if you want to use the shop system that this plugin comes with, you also want to install Vault. Now, after installing the plugins, you obviously need an arena. I built uh, this one in a couple minutes. It is basically just a very small, round arena with, I believe, three layers of TNT. Yeah, that's it. You can use whatever arena you want. It can be a square, it can be round, totally up to you. I'm gonna use a round one, but whatever shape you want, it is all fine. So the very first thing we're gonna do is create an arena. You don't have to select anything for this yet. You just wanna type a slash TR setup, then create, and then the name of your arena. So I'm gonna go for test. Arena test has been created. Now the next thing we want to do is select this entire arena. Now if you have a round arena, Arena, just like me, the best thing you can do is just go to the edges, build out to the side a little bit until these lines come together in the middle. There we go. So this block is the one you want to select. So with world edit, we're just gonna do slash slash want. This will give me a wooden axe and I can left click on this block. Then we're gonna fly to the other side and here we're gonna do the exact same thing. So just build these lines out to the side. There we go. And here I'm gonna right click. Now this entire arena has been selected and we can type slash tr setup set arena and then the name you've given your arena. So in my case that is test. And we're gonna press enter and there we go. Arena test has been set. All right, cool. So after we've done that, we need to set our lose level. Basically the final level of your arena where if you fall on it, you will lose the game. So let us go down all the way to the bottom of this arena. There we go. This is my bottom floor. So we want to stand on this floor and then type slash tr setup set lose level and then the name of your arena. So that is test for me. There we go. So that basically means that if a player falls beneath this level, they will lose. Next up, it is time for the spawn point. So let's go all the way back up to the top again. Then just go stand in the middle or pretty much wherever you want. It really doesn't matter. And then type a slash TR setup set spawn. And then once again, your arena name. There we go. Now next, we're going to set up a spectator spawn point. So where will players spawn to spectate the rest of the game after they have fallen? Well, it needs to be somewhere in your arena. So I'm just going to make a little platform over here. It just needs to be a place where they can spawn on. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to do slash TR setup set spectator and then test. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, so after setting the spectator arena, we are pretty much finished. It is now time to save the arena. So to do that, you want to type TR setup finish and then the name of your arena press enter and there we go now we do still have to set a main lobby so i'm just gonna make my main lobby over here this is gonna be my small main lobby floating island thingy there we go <laughs> make sure it is outside of your actual arena so while the spectator and the spawn point all need to be inside this needs to be outside so i'm just gonna stand here and type a slash tr setup and then set lobby just like that. There we go. And bam! Our arena has been created. If we now type slash tr join test, we will join the arena. And you will see there's a ton of stuff in my inventory. So first of all, we got vote, which allows you to force start the game. Now, of course, you do need a minimum of two players. But if you want to start the game and you don't want to wait for 15 players to join, then this is how you can do that. There's also an information emerald, which will just give some information about the plugin. You most likely want to replace this with some of your own information or maybe just an explanation of the actual game. Then here we got the 
shop. So the shop is basically a, a, a very nice place where you can shop stuff. For example, this is a double jump as you can purchase it with 100 coins. This is a chest plate that gives you thorns. And there's all sorts of other stuff here. And then there is stats. So we can see how many games we've won, how many games we've lost, and how many games we've played in general. And then you can leave again by right clicking the bet, just like that. And we will be set back to the main lobby. Now you're actually able to change a lot more settings about your arena. So when we type slash CR setup configure and then test, you will see a ton of options appear. Now we got simple stuff here, like for example, setting a global lobby, setting the arena bounds, setting the lose level. This is all stuff you can in theory do from this menu, but I find executing commands just simpler than opening up a GUI every single time. Though if you prefer working through this GUI, then you can do that. But over here, you can, for example, set the minimum number of players. You can set the maximum number of players. You can set the vote percent. But we got a teleport location. So this one you might want to tweak a bit. You can set it to either lobby or previous. So previous means that players will be teleported back to wherever they were when they executed the command to join the arena. If you set it to lobby, people will always be set back to the main lobby you've set through TNT Run Reloaded. So that's completely up to you. Now you can also create a join sign. This is really cool. Place a sign and then I'm going to create a join sign. Beep. And there we go. That's how easy it can be. Now over here, you can also change other stuff like the time limit, set start time of visible countdown. There are so many settings you can change, including PvP. Now, in general, I would keep PvP enabled here as it for sure makes the game more interesting. And a lot of items that are purchasable in the shop actually benefit from having PvP enabled. So like you can see, there are tons of settings, all things you can change and customize. I would recommend just going over these checking if there is something you want to change if there is you can and if you think it's great by default just keep it the way it is but now the sign also works so bloop, there we go we're in game <laughs> easy now to finish all of this up let's take a very quick look at the config so in your micro server directory you want to go to the plugins folder then the tnt run reloaded folder and inside of there you will see a ton of files so in the config.yml you can just change basic settings should a boss bar be used what does the xp bar do should ranks be used in chat just you know very basic generic things that you might want to change or not definitely take a look at these settings but here the shop can be a bit important it kind of depends on if you want pvp enabled or not in case you want pvp to be enabled which it is by default then most of these are pretty all right though let's say you want to disable pvp then you might want to change or remove some items from this config file now the configuration of an item is pretty easy and straightforward you have a name you have a cost then a material that will show in the GOI. Will it glow, yes or no? What is the amount? What is the permission required for a person to actually get this item? So in this case, it is tntrun.shop.2. And then you got the lore. And then down here, the specifications of the actual item. So what item is it? How many? What's the name? What's the lore? And does it have any enchantments? Now over here, we also have a big list with dependencies. And note that most of these are optional. But for example, the shop system we talked about before, you will need to make sure Vault is installed to actually get that working. If you want to use placeholders, you also need placeholder API. If you want to create holograms, you can use decent holograms, which I would indeed highly recommend. Over here, we also have a list with other permissions. So by default, every single player will be able to actually join a TNT run. Also, the TNT run shop is enabled by default, so that's good. So is the party feature, the auto join feature, but the double jump feature, for example, is not enabled by default. So this permission, TNT run dot double jump dot n, is a permission you can add to a certain group, for example, VIP rank or default or moderator. And if you replace the n with a number, then that is the limit of double jumps they can use. Now, this plugin actually allows you to do a lot more than that I've shown you in this video. So definitely take a look at all the commands and configs so you can customize this game to the way you desire. And that is gonna be everything for today. I wanna thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. You would really help me out by doing that. You actually would. Also, a huge thank you to my channel members for the incredible support. Thank you guys so much. And then I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Uh,